Hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I hope everybody's safe. I hope everyone is healthy. Today we're going to talk about some jerseys, baseball related. Mostly Cleveland Indians. I've been suffering Cleveland Indians fan my whole life, but I have acquired quite a few of the Indians jerseys over the years, so I thought I'd give you a, a look at some of them and see what you think about them. The first one is an actual uniform that I picked up. It is the 1930 road uniform heavy material I know at some point they were flannel wool um, double knit polyester uh, I'm not sure this one's pretty heavy it's number 19 which was uh, the Hall of Famer Bob Feller so I have that one next on the list would be a 1933 home jersey this one's done by Mitchell and Ness uh, it's got the one of the first Indian logos on the sleeve with the C for Cleveland. And this is also a full uniform. I was told that that one was a turn back the clock uniform that was worn by Carlos Baerga. It was donated by Indians Charities to an organization that then auctioned it, and that's how I got it years ago. Um, it was supposed to come with some paperwork but I never did so um, I'm just gonna say it's a it's a great jersey it's a great uniform but to prove that Carlos Baerga wore that I can't do that so we'll, we'll just leave it at that next one would be an Indians home jersey from the mid 50s back in their heyday of 1954 when they made it to the World Series but lost <clears throat> speaking of World Series and Indians it's not a jersey but it was on a jersey I was gifted this by someone that was uh, a co-worker and, and uh, a friend and this was the original Chief Wahoo patch that was on the Indians jerseys in the late 40s. I think they wore this up to 48. This patch here is, is not old, it's, it's newer commemorating the Indians winning the 1948 World Series. This patch was said to have come off of the jersey of Bertie Tebbets in the Indian Spring Training right in that era, 47-48. So I thought that was uh, a very prized possession and I was very happy to have it. Uh, jumping ahead to the mid-70s, 1975. Crazy jerseys. The, the uh, uniforms started getting colorful in the mid-60s because of the invention of color TV. Uh, Cleveland kind of went a little goofy in the mid-70s, but a lot of teams did. The Chicago White Sox wore shorts back when Bill Veck owned them. That was kind of odd. But it was it was this style. And then this, and again I have no way of proving it. It does have, or did have, it's got a patch somewhere. I'm not sure where. But this is a uh, game-worn jersey possibly from Paul Dade, who was double zero for the Cleveland Indians. I think we either got him from San Diego or we might have traded him to San Diego. Uh, moving up into, I think, the late 80s, 1989. This might be the uh, pullover style with the V-neck, with the Chief Wahoo on the sleeve. That would have been the home version, and then in the early 90s, they would have had this as the away jersey done in gray with Cleveland on the front. Chief Wahoo on the sleeve. And then we have the home jersey, which is number 23. That's a two inch extra sleeve length. This was a game used jersey from hard hitting Mark Witten. You may remember him, he was in the big leagues for. Quite a few years. Started out with the Toronto Blue Jays, came to Cleveland, left Cleveland. We had to trade him to St. Louis Cardinals um, to get pitching. Unfortunately, there was a tragic spring training accident that killed two Indians pitchers and injured a third, and they needed pitching, and they traded him to the Cardinals. Uh, with the Cardinals, he drove in 12 runs and hit four RBIs. I was in the second game of a uh, doubleheader against Cincinnati, I think, and he hit the four home runs, and uh, I don't know if he drove in 12 runs in that game or if it was a combined with a doubleheader, but I think he tied a record for both. Uh, 
one of the best uh, bat flips in Indians history too. In the, uh, I think it was the American League Division uh, Series. So hard hitting Mark Witten. Mark Witten was kind of a uh, fun person to watch play in Cleveland. He did pretty good there. I mentioned the bat flip. He also was a pitcher for the Indians for one inning against the Oakland Athletics in. Uh, I don't know what year that was. They were losing something like 9-2 to two or something crazy, and their pitching staff was, was thin. So they put him in, and he pitched an inning. I think he hit a batter, walked two, but he struck out three uh, to finish the side. So that was kind of interesting. I think he was only throwing maybe mid-80s, I'm guessing. But after we traded him, or the Indians traded him to St. Louis, I think he was one of the top five in outfield assists. He had a cannon for an arm. We're going to come up to another game-worn jersey by Chad O.J. O.J. should have been the MVP of the 1997 World Series if the Indians would have won the World Series, which they lost in extra innings to the Florida Marlins. Uh, he would have been responsible for winning two games of that series, both games against the Marlins ace, Kevin Brown. And in uh, game six, he batted twice. He hit a single, drove in two runs. In second at bat, he doubled scored a run, uh, would have been responsible for winning half of the World Series, but again, we Indians didn't win it, so that was unfortunate. And then I've got two that I got in the year 2000. These were uh, the white and alternate blue jerseys that I received when I went to the Cleveland Indians Fantasy Camp in 2000 here in Florida and they put the name and number on the back. I was number 43. That was my badge number when I was working. So I have those. And then they had an alternate jersey right around that time. Um, probably early 2000s, maybe 2005 with the Indians. It would have been a, a home jersey with Chief Wahoo. And in 2007 this was a jersey that was worn by the Indians during the Civil Rights game, which was new in 2007. It was supposed to commemorate the strides made in civil rights for baseball and specifically for African American players. Uh, that They were fearful were losing touch with baseball and they wanted to promote a game and try and get some, some interest in some of the uh, inner city areas and try and promote baseball to the African American community. Uh, ironically, the game caused some problems. It was played in Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't know this until later. I read it on, uh, I think, Wikipedia. It said that due to a large population of Cherokee uh, people that lived in Memphis, they were upset that the Indians were included in the Civil Rights game. I didn't even give that a thought, so that was my bad. Uh, I thought the Indians were a good choice for a civil rights game. They uh, were the first American League team to sign an African-American player with Larry Doby. I grew up um, listening to stories and collecting baseball cards uh, that were older that uh, included uh, Larry Doby, Satchel Paige, Minnie Minoso, uh, Luke Easter, among others. Uh, this was a uh, coach's jersey. It's supposed to be game-worn. And I, I thought that was a good choice for a civil rights game, but um, I, I never gave it a thought that it would be offensive to uh, American Indians, which was unfortunate. And then I also have a Cleveland Indians spring training, I don't know if you call it a spring training jersey or a workout jersey or something like that. It's a pullover. It's got a couple of buttons, but um, for the most part, they were buttoned down. And then I think in the, the 80s, they went over to the pullovers and did that so if you're if you like baseball jerseys or baseball uniforms there is what I call pretty much the uniform Bible it was by uh, an author named Mark Oconan I, I hope I'm saying that right uh, I did some research on it I looked it up it's available on Amazon and there are several copies uh, both hardcover and paperback on eBay but this is kind of the definitive guide for the history of baseball uniforms. This is the, the hard cover with um, a dust cover. And it breaks down all the American League teams. And what's nice about this 
kind of losing control of it here, is if you were a fan of the Seattle Pilots, they've included their baseball uniforms in with the history of the Seattle Mariners, along with the Brooklyn Dodgers, LA Dodgers. So uh, there's a lot of different teams that's included in this book, and this is something that I picked up as pretty much a collector's item, but I've used it for research and, and uh, have gone to it many times. So it's, it's a good book to have. If you don't have it, look for it. It's a good one to pick up. So having said all that, again, I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's healthy. Thanks for joining me. Leave comments down below, good or bad. Thank you very much. And I will talk to you again next week. Bye.